Hello everyone, welcome back to day number two of the 2014 LCS EU Spring Promotion Tournament, at least in the group stages here. And we apologize for yesterday's little bit of inconveniences, but we do have all those matches, well at least one of them coming up today. We're going to be kicking the day off with Copenhagen Wolves going up against TCM Gaming. Spottington, how are you feeling about today's games? This is pretty much the match as far as anyone can predict. This is... Two best teams we've seen throughout the previous few months over the, you know, in the Challenger scene. And Copenhagen Wolves, very, very dominant yesterday. Obviously very similar to TCM, who really, really took their opponents down pretty hard as well. So who's going to come out on top between the two? It's just very difficult to call. Well, time will tell us on that one. But just to kind of recap yesterday's uh, games that we're going to pull up the rankings, just to show you what happened. We did have Super Hot Crew take down KMT for, for, uh, for their first victory. Then Copenhagen Wolves were able to pick up their win versus Karante and a TCM taking a win over ST. I'm not even going to say their name again. Said it yesterday. I'm not even going to try again uh, for today. But the last two matches that we had, it was Karante versus KMT and Copenhagen Wolves versus TCM. Obviously, the Copenhagen Wolves game will be coming up right now. And the Karante versus KMT match will come up tomorrow. Um, as the first game of the day, just kind of give you an insight on how that's going to be working here. But we already do have the teams ready, and I believe we're going to be getting into the picks and bans very, very shortly. Yep, should be done. I mean, you're saying you're saying to them, they're ready. They're you're ready. We're ready. I find it difficult to believe it wouldn't start fairly shortly. Yep, yeah, and we already are going into the picks and bans, and I hope you guys all got your Battle of the Atlantic tickets yesterday because those things sold out ridiculously fast. I know some people out there were a little bit sad. I know one in particular, Skyen, didn't really have uh, the ability to get any on his side. But either way, picks and bans coming up. We have Cassidy and Fizz being banned out from TCN. They will be on the blue side for you, and at least taken away by the Copenhagen Wolves. Okay, well... Fairly, fairly standard stuff here. I mean, you, we saw yesterday, you do not want to let Cassidin into the hands of Kowtard. That's just far too scary. And he's even even if it's not Kowtard, Cassidin, that's just not something you particularly want to deal with. Fizz, much the same. Elise just being very, uh, very well respected ban has been now for quite a long time. I think Copenhagen Wolves just respect that ability to snowball the entire game from that jungle position, which might have changed slightly in the patch, but hasn't changed enough to, to stop the ban. I think one thing we can agree about what we saw from yesterday is that the teams haven't fully adapted to the new patch yet. They're still a little bit iffy on some things. They didn't really, you know, bring out some new champions. Like, for instance, Severe has been banned out pretty much every single game of OGN. We even saw Shy playing Dr. Mundo, I'd say, in the top lane. But they haven't really gone with those things yet. But the final bans are coming. In. Evelyn, TCM going to be able to take that one away. And Shivana on the Copenhagen Wolves side. Well, uh, these are all very, very strong champions. And yeah, we haven't seen those, those unusual picks as much here yet, but... It's only kind of a matter of time, and especially when you start to see the matchups which are less favored. You know, games like, like we saw yesterday where Copenhagen Wolves kind of playing conventionally against them wasn't really an option. They ended up uh, just running away with the game. P taking out unusual champions, say, hey, Dr. Mundo is, is pretty much quintessential unusual champion at this point, but um, taking champions like that uh, against, against a team that isn't prepared for it can really, really work for you. Well, we do see TS or TSM, TCM, mm -hmm. uh, chat yesterday got me on that one. TCM actually take away the Renekton, going to be giving that one over to Jay while not going to let Youngbook be able to play it this time. And then, of course, Ziggs and Lucian picked up on that Copenhagen Wolf side. Okay, Ziggs, also now... Uh -huh. kind of Sorry. <laughs> there it is. I was, I was waiting for the Mundo to come in because that was banned out against him yesterday. <laughs> he, Naru Terador very much favors his, his very health-based junglers. He is one of the few people we see playing Volibear jungle. Mundo right up his sweep. Uh, up his sweep? Up his sleep. Up his alley, street. I think is what he's trying to say. Okay, street, street. too. That works as it well. It starts with an S. I mean, alley, I mean, it works. <laughs> I, words. How you, how you word. I don't know. I, I have that problem sometimes. But we do see, let's see, on the other side, the Vladimir and the Zyra picked up. And one thing about Zyra seen on the Copenhagen Wolf side in the hands of Kowtard, it can be used in that middle lane instead of, the, instead of that support. Yeah, simply by having a mid laner that can play the champion, although in this case they have picked out Ziggs, so it's not as likely, but simply by virtue of having that mid lane option, it just means, well, then you can't necessarily counterpick either a Zyra support or a Zyra mid because they can just say, well, okay, play whatever the more favorable matchup is. In this case, though, if they ran Ziggs support, they would, Bronze 5 tactics, very unlikely. <laughs> I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, well, over on the other side, we did see that Annie sneak in for TCM, so we're going to have potentially that Caitlyn Annie lane coming out here, and the Garen, I'm not really feeling, I'm not really feeling too confident that one will be locked in. Yeah, I, you, no, no, mm, you, you're swapping. <laughs> you, you scare me there for a second, you're like, oh, we could possibly, but no, it looks like we'll be swapping that one out, and what do you see happening from these two compositions already, that they've already picked up? 
Well, at the moment, what you can see on TCM is sort of a, a much less AoE-focused approach here. They've they've picked out, yes, some AoE on their team, you know, Ari a little bit, Annie will contribute, but is probably going to be the support in this situation. Renekton puts out deceptive amounts of AoE damage, but if you're comparing that to the, the, the level of damage that's going to be coming out of Copenhagen Wolves in that 5-on-5 five -five bursty team fight, Vladimir, Zyra, Lucian also does quite a bit. Piercing Light can hit more than one person. The culling obviously lets him contribute from a safe distance. He can't rely on his team as much to peel with this kind of comp. And obviously, Mega Inferno Bomb. Massive, massive damage and a massive, massive AoE. So, uh, looks like they're picking towards that jungle. Probably just uh, looking for that little bit of extra peel. And in general, just to get that early jungling, it's not so much a focus pick, at least in there, on their team fight. Yeah, that one thing I kind of like to see is that you mentioned it yesterday. A lot of teams going for heavy magic power kind of compositions with the support you know you obviously can build a little bit of ap now with the changes in 314 but having an ap top lane an ap mid lane and then a support that can build a lot of ap is going to be very deadly i would imagine yeah that is the, the difference essentially between picking a very heavy ad composition a very heavy ap composition is just that straight up you have an ad carry ad carry damage scales the hardest out of anyone and the biggest problems with heavy of a single type of damage compositions emerge in the late game late game you can uh, you can itemize your AD carry just to output enough damage for two or three late game mages, so it doesn't really come into a factor into a factor as much. And we're seeing a Mundo. This is what I'm curious about. We have seen very early dragons done by like Mundo or Naz or anything like that. Do you think that's a possibility? You think they might go for something like that? They would clear it very quickly, but remember the value of dragon in general has gone down. It's still a very valuable thing if you can sneak that away. But at the same time, Mundo is not going to be able to solo that very easily. He uh, will get very low just purely by clearing the jungle and using his own abilities. So it becomes a difficult situation. If they can swing it, however, if they can get the vision control, for instance, maybe if they, uh, they run with a lot more ward clearing trinkets, for instance, it's a possibility. And yeah, that's one thing we should point out that we saw yesterday with the ward clearing trinkets. A lot of teams started to switch them up mid-game. Like, they obviously started with the warding trinket early on, just to get the electric vision down, but they switched up to the to the lens just to be able to clear out any vision later on. And we saw a lot of teams... Well, actually, so we saw certain teams doing this, and other teams, unfortunately, not, even though they did swap, like, maybe one or two. And coming into this game, based on the compositions we have, which team are you favoring here? I, I have to say, I like Copenhagen Wolves a little bit more on the whole. But TCM are very, very comparable. Across the board, in fact, both these team compositions could easily take it. And it's, I, I mean, I was talking about the AOE level, uh, you know, on Copenhagen Walls being a bit stronger. Yes, it is, but it's not so much stronger that TCM could never team fight. They just need to pick the right fight. They just need to pick someone off with Ari, which is the classic situation. Plus, they've got a bursty comp. Plus, they've got Ace in the hole to support that kind of playstyle. They can... They can definitely fight on pretty much every single front, and both teams could manage in that situation. And one thing I'm curious about is TCM has a lot of tanking potential. They have, you know, obviously Renekton, they have a Mundo here, and over on Copenhagen Wolves side, you have, you know, a Vladimir who can be tanky, but not really as tanky as you kind of would like to as the game goes on. No, Vlad... He's a sustained damage mage. He, he sits in the middle of the team. He uses a lot of separate rotations of all of his skills, which does necessitate him being a bit tankier, but he just tends to usually rely a little bit on his uh, uh, pool into Zonia's and then into pool again late game. You might see if he wants to go a little bit tankier for his team, he can um, he can build something like a cooldown reduction build, like a Spirit Visage. He is actually taking a bit of damage right at this moment, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a major concern. He's just going to walk off and recall. Yeah, and we can see some... Uh, Trinkets already coming in here. You do see the Sweeper's Lens already peaked, uh, picked up at least one of them over on the Copenhagen Wolves side and none over on the other. Talk us through what you think about that early game. The thing about the Sweeping Lens early game is that the cooldown is so massively long. You can clear away one ward, assuming you even know where it is, which is quite often not the case. You, you, you know, if the enemy support goes into the brush, waits for a second or two, it's completely thrown off where you think he might be. So even if you can clear out the ward, you then... You then they will get their ward back again much, much quicker. So the only thing it can be used for, essentially, at that stage of the game, is to give your jungler a window of opportunity to bait them in to try and reward it. That can work, and it kind of shows that uh, we can expect some ganks from Amazing, but um, it's not that reliable, and it's very easy for it to go wrong. 
All right, well, these two teams do have quite a bit of, uh, of history between them. Let me see, our, I believe they're, they're pretty much one and one across the board across the past uh, at least a year where Copenhagen Wolves, they actually got the better of them at Gamescom, uh, beating TCM for the promotion stages. And of course, they lost to TCM in Tenerife. So it's a lot of history between these two and they're both, if anything, this is a major grudge match for them where they could potentially hold the other team back from getting into uh, the promotion qualifiers. Yeah, they've both been just each other's anathema. They have for such a long time been the guys that go up against each other in the finals or, you know, if they happen to meet in, in the quarters or whatever, then, then that's where the whole tournament gets decided. They are just really, really solid teams. They, they don't have the inconsistency problems that you quite often see in challenger teams where they're just, just a little bit off compared to where you would normally expect them to be. I think we both agree that these are two of the teams out of the six that we expect to get into those group stages, or past the group stages against NIP, against SK, or Mitri Makers. And uh, we do see both supports going for the coin here, which is a little bit interesting to me. Uh, well, we mentioned it yesterday, actually. Generally, Shirelli is active. Not Shirelli is active. Talisman of Ascension <laughs> active, uh, formerly of Shirelli's Reverie is generally the most useful active. Obviously, there are situations where each one could be valuable over the other, uh, but Talisman of Ascension generally considered the best one overall. So if you are able to go for the Ancient Coin, if that uh, if the stats you're getting from it kind of suit your character to a degree, and in laning generally it's going to suit everyone, then it's generally going to be the best choice. It will give you that option for the late game. Yeah, it's going to be very dangerous with an Annie with that too. You can speed up, speed up your Munos again a little bit quicker. And that flash stun is always one of those things you have to look out for uh, in that late game. But right now, both junglers just want to point out, just farming up right now. We see Nuritador currently at level four. Amazing, going to be hitting four very soon. Does have his double buff still available right now. And I, I want to let you point out something that you mentioned yesterday towards the end of the show about Mundo and what makes him so viable. There, you said there's one mastery that really makes him so much better now. Yeah, indeed. The defense tree right now, actually, by quite a few people, actually, Mitroka getting rooted in the bottom. Sorry, okay. Not actually that important. But, um, taking a bit of poke. But, Perseverance in the defensive tree right now has a massive gold value. And now Terridor getting caught. Yeah, he's getting caught down here. He does have that red buff on Amazing to slow him down, but those cleavers, or at least in his case, those briefcases, just strong enough to keep Amazing off of him. But you can see the damage that Amazing's already been able to do to him very early on. And with that sweeping lens, he's looking for a ward. He actually, I think, missed it just barely right there. Yeah, that's already, he's kind of asserting his dominance though over uh, uh, over Naruto door. Yeah, not a very generous hitbox. I was kind of kind of expecting him to see that, but that's actually going to cost him because now he will think that area was not warded. He will think they won't have known where he's gone. That gives him actually a little bit of an edge because TCM can plan around amazing, not knowing that, and they they most likely saw that the ward wasn't seen. Yeah, and right now looking across the lanes, we do have a slight CS advantage for Jay while in that top lane compared to Young Buck. And everywhere else is pretty much dead even right now. And the Lucian Zara lane, I want you to talk us through the bottom lane because a Caitlyn Annie is what we typically see. It's like the bread and butter of an AD carry support lane at the moment, unless it's maybe Tarek and Severe. Against this Zyra and this Lucian, you do obviously have the Zyra can give you the range, but who do you expect to really win this one out? As a rule, Annie brings you so much potential to get a kill at any point, but uh, the problem with Annie is obviously her range, and the fact she has to get in so close does mean that we're seeing a lot of Zyra purely as a counter to Annie. I haven't actually seen her, I think, so far uh, since the patch in a competitive game being run against anything other than Annie, because she was actually nerfed as a support. So, not surprising to see her here, but definitely uh, looking to... Uh, when it gets to level 6 is kind of when we'll see it happen, because there's burst versus disengage, and it just comes down to who applies it better. And I do have to let you guys know at home, I'm the one controlling the camera, so I apologize mm -hmm. for any missed kills. And there's a reason I'm actually keeping the camera down there at bottom lane, because I'm really curious, well, not really curious, but I'm really worried that when we see one of those two teams go in, you know, with the Annie with the stun, the damage that she can do, or with the Lucian and the Zyra, it's going to be a very quick kill of Matraka, who's you know already down sub half life right now. Anything can really happen currently. Yeah, it really is. And the fact is, if she gets rooted, the burst from Lucian works really, really well. But if she doesn't get rooted, she ends up taking the ranged plant, the Q damage, and that's really, really significant. Actually, that pool was just used at top. Oh, no, it's not going to come in. Young Buck in trouble here, but he does have those double utility summoners flashing and ghosted away. But Jaywell flashes in for him as well. He's so low on health, but he dodges the briefcase. He's going to escape with his life, but not before a lot of damage is done. 
and that turret going to be dropped really low. Yeah, Matroko taking a lot of damage in the bottom lane as well. So kind of a swapsies in terms of map pressure there, but uh, bot lane is not going to drop down too quickly. And it does seem like uh, Barney D is still in there and uh, has to be careful not to get rooted. And cow turret. I have to say, as an amateur player, well, quote unquote amateur, he's probably to me impressed me the most over time. You know, I remember him back in the spring split when he was with the Copenhagen Wolves, um, the team that's now NIP. All he could really play was Zyra, but he's been able to expand his champion pool so vastly now that he's really adapted and he's really come into his own. Yeah, it's it's always it's always fun to watch teams develop because you think of Copenhagen Wolves and and, and indeed TCM, and then they're just. They are the teams that we've seen for so long being so dominant, but they have also been making progress. They haven't rested on their laurels this time. They've always kind of been aiming towards pretty much this tournament. In fact, I think I spoke to Belgian Beast the other day, and he pretty much says said to me, there is there is nothing else that I'm focused on right now. The only thing I care about is this tournament. Wow. That shows definitely what they want to have uh, happen here. And one thing you have to kind of give Copenhagen Wolves uh, extra credit on is that, you know, they had Reckless for the longest time, and people always asked, you know, is he the person that's been carrying them? And people, you know, said quite a bit that, yeah, he was the person that was, you know, making them win these tournaments. But without him, they've been doing a very good job and amazing. Coming up bottom here, Forgiven actually flashed in. We do see the ultimate use out of Vi here. Barnty, very low on health. He does not have flash to get away. It looks like he might go down here as it looks like they're going to pick up the kill momentarily. And from that, with that first one coming in in the hands of Unlimited, we could see a dragon coming up. Yeah, we'll see if they go for that. That wouldn't be surprising. They've got the four-man commitment. They, uh, I don't think they know that Mundo isn't there, but they can guess he's a decent way away, and that just means easy, easy dragon time. However, Lucian has not joined up with the team, and that will slow down the dragon clear. They will probably get it before Mundo arrives, but can he stop them and get kills? He has a smite available. He's looking for it. We do see Amazing actually pick it up, but it's going to cost him his life here. Zerutor actually came in with the ultimate to speed across Belgian Beast. Popping his ultimate to go straight for Unlimited here, who's dropping very low. He's going to end up getting picked off here momentarily. Nurtzor tried to escape with his life, but Kautar doesn't have his ultimate available. And just like that, two kills coming into peace for both teams, but we did see that dragon go in the hands of Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, heavy, heavy commitment there by TCM, and they might have been able to just snipe off one kill and back out, but as it happened, they did not. And that is actually probably going to favor Copenhagen Wolves, even discounting the dragon. Their AD carry is still farming, their mid lane is still farming, gives them just a little bit of an edge, tower damage, and experience on gold. One thing that we see developing with the items that's going to become relatively scary is the fact that Belgian Beast, he almost has his DFG done. And when that happens, if he does start to roam around, he could pick up some kills and really start to snowball the game, I want to say. I mean, TCM in their game uh, yesterday, they didn't look as solid as Copenhagen Wolves did in their game. But they're still, we know them as a very strong team. Yeah, and you can always put that kind of thing, like, yes, maybe sometimes a team, you know, Copenhagen Wolves won in 20 minutes and TCM won in 30 minutes, but as I recall, I mean, it wasn't necessarily that exact timing, but as I recall, TCM actually ran quite a late game orientated composition last time, so it's not entirely fair to compare them on that kind of account. Uh, it's, I, although... It is fair to say, I think, that Copenhagen Wolves has always been number one and TCM has generally been number two. Well, another looking to prove you wrong here on that one, but Kaltar does actually escape some damage out of Belgian Beast Middle. And, you know, I, I kind of want to agree. And the thing is, we always saw TCM when they played against Copenhagen Wolves, they would focus on Reckless. They'd focus on that bottom lane. They would try to kill him over and over. And that allowed Kaltar to really blossom, no pun intended, when he played Zyra uh, as, a, as a player in middle. But now with TCM, they don't have that ability to just shut down one lane over and over again. But in the meantime, the top one, we see Youngway getting caught here. Nerds are going to be coming in. Can he tank up the turret? He does have the ultimate pop, so he will have the regen. But they back away. They let Youngbug escape. Yeah, Youngbuck is doing actually a really, really good job of avoiding these ganks, but now he's caught in a situation where he try he wants to save his tower, but he doesn't really have the health to afford going near, especially with no pull up. But that's up in five, and Amazing is there, so it's not going to. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can even win that fight with how tanky TCM is. You saw uh, Nurtador's health, it was ridiculous. But in the meantime, let's see a turret actually fall. First one of the game in the hands of Copenhagen Wolves taking down that bottom lane. And we talked about CS a little bit earlier, and we had JWoww winning top lane. Everywhere else across the board is pretty even. So we'll get back to that in just a second as we do here. Amazing go in on an Arutador here. He's actually going to get trapped in if he does keep going down. Because Kautar is in hot pursuit. The ultimate coming out of him. It's actually going to be enough to get him down. And Amazing picks up that kill. And Belgian Beast forced to back away. 
Nice prediction by Amazing there, catching out Naruterador and relying, in fact, on Zig's ability to follow him up. You could see Naruterador wasn't feeling too scared there. He didn't use his flash until it was already too late for him to get away. So Copenhagen Wolves getting one up there, and that is a nice little advantage for them. Um, bot lane as well being pushed back, so it just seems at the moment like Copenhagen Wolves are really starting to build up some steam here. Yeah, it seems like they're really trying to assert their dominance across the map, and Youngbug, like you said before, do an amazing job of just surviving in his lane. I mean, he's losing CS right now, which can be very detrimental as the game goes on, but in, most importantly, he hasn't been giving up kills, and he hasn't given away his turret just yet. Yeah, the interesting thing about Vlad versus Renekton is that Renekton can snowball that lane incredibly hard. If he gets ahead, he generally stays ahead. The thing, though, is Vlad actually... I know this is going to sound very strange considering how different the champions are in many ways, but he actually transitions to doing a very similar late-game thing, but better. He does more damage. He's less easy to ignore, but instead of being tanky, he actually just becomes invulnerable. So if Vlad can stay comparable, he will actually eventually end up kind of outscaling Renekton, at least in teamfight presence. I'm really curious to see what item path he goes with, too, because right now... He's sitting on the revolver. I was, I was wondering, is he going to go for that, that selfish spell vamp item, or is he going to go into Will of the Ancients so they have potentially triple AP? But I guess we'll find that out very shortly. And the two support builds, we did see the medallion picked up a little bit earlier for Unlimited. And we do see Barnaby able to pick his up just recently. It's actually a little point of information. Spirit of the Spectral Wraith no longer gives any spell vamp. That I did not know. That shows you my knowledge on 314. Well, you were in Singapore. <laughs> it does make it a bit difficult to play. That is my excuse. I go with that. Yeah, well, uh, we, can, we can run with that. Copenhagen Wolves, though, continuing their just their train of control over the game. Actually, maybe looking to turn this around. On Earth, he's kind of getting caught right there, but he's going to back away. Or will they want to go for a fight here? They don't have the greatest of positionings. They do have potentially JR to come down from that top and Amazing, oh. he's committing to this. He wants to get Nerdzador down. He pops his ultimate. He actually tries to flash. He misses it over the wall, and he's still regenerating this up. An amazing ult ultimate coming out of Bardi, stunning up Amazing, but just to save Nerdzador's life. But in the meantime, you're seeing the rest of Copenhagen was push this middle lane down. They are, they are completely taking control. We actually saw Lucian going behind the tower, chasing away Belgian Beast, forcing out his ultimate charges using the culling. And that now means that there's going to be a potential for Matroko. Oh, he's getting pretty low. And you just see the damage that Forgiven's able to do against him here. And he didn't go for that standard build. He didn't go for that Triforce. He's actually gone for a Bloodthirster as his first item here. And what do you think about that? It's going to give him the most raw damage. And also, considering the fact that Copenhagen Wolves at the moment are kind of in an extended laning phase almost in the bot lane, Lucian is just pushing with Zyra, and they're doing that kind of uh, two-man split push team there. Bloodthirster gives him the sustain. It means that he can afford to go in, force his opponents back, and then get that health back again using the Bloodthirster. And across the board, we do see, look at Matraco, set on 1,100 gold. But all he has is a pickaxe. He is hurting quite a bit. Oh, we do see the top lane though. JML going down to Youngbuck here. Knight has gone down, but Youngbuck has the ghost. He has the flash. And again, he survives. Yeah, it's just very, very difficult because there's a little trick you can do, Vlad versus Renekton. If you pull at the exact instant that Renekton's stun animation starts, the stun will be used, but no damage and no stun will resolve, and you just pull out. I bet Jay was hoping that he doesn't know about that one, yeah. but I'm assuming Youngblood is going to be able to pick that one up. He's going to be going for it, but again, another dragon going over to Copenhagen Wolves, second of the game. And right now, Nerds are looking for a kill on the Youngblood here top lane, but he still has that flash to get away. He still has... Well, I, I, he still has. He, he went for the double utility summoners that have been able to keep him alive. Yeah, I mean, remember though, Young Buck, he is, he is the Renekton King. He plays, like, uh, he used to play almost nothing but Renekton. He knows all the tricks to do with Renekton matchups, essentially, and that does include in reverse. Uh, but now, amazing, maybe looking for Barney D. Oh, Limited gets taunted up by Belgian Beast there. That might have saved Barney D's life, but they're still pushing down this bottom lane, and Nerdzador, he's still top lane, as well as JWoww. They don't have the tanky man that they need to defend against us. Yeah, they have a stun out of Annie, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, and do they even have the damage to burst amazing? They don't seem to feel confident in this, but if they can catch someone like Unlimited now, they could potentially do it. But there is so much God, that poke. burst damage on the tower itself. Because think about it, Zig's passive now, remember, also does, what, 200? 250% damage to towers? One auto attack could potentially, if chained with another from his team, take out that tower right there on that health. And we do see that Nerdzador was forced to back away, was forced to come and uh, defend up this turret here, but... 
It seems like every time that TCM goes for a gank on that top side on a young buck with that two-man team of Nurtador and JWoww, the Wolves just respawn right away with getting a turret or pushing a turret down very quickly. They've already been able to do that middle, they're doing it now bottom lane, and they seem to have TCM just kind of respawning to everything they possibly can and making them play very reactive. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves have always had very, very good lane rotations, and this is, this is what they're showing right here because that four man, uh, TCM did not know where they had gone. They didn't know if they were still there. And that now means that Copenhagen Wolves, having seen Belgian Beast in the mid lane, okay, we'll finish that tower off for free because TCM didn't really have a choice in that. They had to either sit around and wait for Copenhagen Wolves to show themselves, or, and, and that would have essentially made them even in terms of time wasting, so Copenhagen Wolves wouldn't have cared to, to particularly badly, at, or they could go and try and get some farm, but then get punished for it potentially. Yeah, it's, that was actually a very smart play of them. I, I will definitely give them that one, just to kind of bait it out, just like you were saying. But right now we do have TCM trying to respawn, trying to go for a push on this middle turret, but that thing is very, very healthy. And as you can see on the minimap, we have Youngbug in the vicinity. We have Amazing as well, who looks like he actually might go in for a gank here. He could start that off. Even looking for it too. Amazing, gonna be starting off the fight here. Will he go on to Belgium? Because he's gonna use his ult onto him. The God Ultimate coming in right on top of it too. That's gonna be enough to finish him off. They're leaving him alone. They're not even worried about him anymore. And Amazing getting dropped very low, but he does escape. And now JWoww being attacked with Focus of the Copenhagen Wolves. He is gonna fall. And in the meantime, while all this is happening, Matroco is just pushing this bottom lane by himself. He is doing that, but now Copenhagen Wolves have a chance to respond. They are pushing down that mid with four men versus two. Amazing will be able to just head to bot lane fairly shortly, and actually now you can see Matroko is going to try in time, but even if he is, this tower is going to lose some health. It's going to lose, looks like, even more than that. Any sun coming in, but they don't have enough to back it up with, and the roots are going to be dropped with Kautar, and that Zix ultimate, and that was just, it was a defensive play out of, uh, out of Barney D, but Copenhagen Wolves took full advantage of it. Yes, indeed. It's just... What do you do against this steam train? At the moment, it's an 18-minute inhibitor against the number two team uh, for the number one at the moment. Oh, Barney D get a nice stop on a young book and forgiven, but again, no one there to back him up. Uh, back him up. Belgium Beast doesn't have his ultimate up yet again, and every time he gets close to the lineup of, of the Copenhagen Wolves, he gets dropped down to about 10% health. They're so bursty that Ari actually has trouble to... Like, normally what Ari loves to do is dash in, throw a couple of skills, or dash out so bursty and there's such instant CC, he can actually get locked down and murdered in between Spirit Rush charges and that makes life very, very difficult, especially if you fall behind. I would not be surprised to see Belgian Beast shoot for Azonias next and may actually be regretting the decision to go Deathfire, but at the moment it's looking like he may not even have the time. Well, speaking of time, we do have about a minute and a half on Dragon. We do have that middle inhibitor being down for the Copenhagen Wolves and that means, will we see a Baron coming up soon? And the damage that they have with the items they've been able to build up so far, I would imagine it'd be very, very fast if they want to go for it. They certainly could clear it reasonably fast, but at this point, Copenhagen Wolves have very little reason to risk it. They are generally a solid and safe team. Yes, they might go for it if they get absolute vision control over the area and they know that TCM can't respond. But if I'm going to be honest here, I expect they'll just carry on doing what they have been doing. There are outer towers to still be taken in the top lane. And indeed, the dragon will be popping up soon, which is a much safer kind of medium, medium reward for a very low risk as opposed to high and high. Well, speaking of turrets, five to one is the lead mm. for the Copenhagen Wolves. 72 in kills, 20 minutes in. They have 34.5 thousand gold to the 27.3. They are, for the lack of a better word, steamrolling over the TCM right now. Yeah, and that is something that TCM have to try and find an answer to, but it's going to be very difficult for them to do right now. Their team composition does have some tools to get catches, though, and that can be useful for them, such as top lane. And Rotori is looking for a kill on the young back here. He actually pulls the cleaver, and again, I think that was the fourth gank now, that he's been able to pull two people away from TCM and able to survive the gank. And in the meantime, Coconut Wolves, they're setting up towards the bottom side of the jungle of TCM. Yeah, and it just hasn't hurt Young Buck that much at all, really. 7,100 gold. He's actually ahead of Renekton in spite of the farm difference. They're going for him again, though. Might be in trouble this time, keeping in for a little bit too long, but just that ultimate is enough to scare Naruto Dora away as he backs off to those double golems. Just going to try to heal up from the ultimate, but he is still, as you can see, very, very low on life right now. And Young Buck. With the wave curl that he has, I would imagine it'd be very hard for TCM to get this turret down. Yeah, he has to be careful so long as he has no pool. But there you go, using the Zig's ultimate there just to relieve that pressure. And in the meantime, because of that massive commitment in the top lane by TCM, 
Copenhagen Wolves taking advantages elsewhere on the map. You'll expect to see Lucian now head down to that bottom lane and start getting that pushing out so that his team can then abuse that map pressure to move up to, say, top or go on. Well, I, they can't really go mid, actually, anymore. There's nothing there more to get. And this is what this is one thing I want to point out about Copenhagen Wolves that I said during a I am Cologne is that they don't look like an amateur team at all. Like no. if they pull someone away, they're always looking to take advantage of any way possible. You know, if someone if two people are top lane, take a dragon. If two people are top lane, take a turret. Like they are playing like an LCS team right now. And he said Belgian Beast was saying earlier, you know, he's he's only been focusing on this, but right now TCM they are they're getting walked over. Yeah, and. In fairness, that does happen to professionals too on occasions. This is a best of one format here, so maybe this is just one of those games where TCM were not on form, where things are not going right for them, but, or you can definitely tell things are not going right for them, but uh, where, you know, they're just not clicking as much as they would like to. But if that's the case, tough luck. There's nothing, uh, you know, I don't think they'll be matching up again. Uh, actually, I don't understand round robin formats. Maybe they would. I don't know. That's, I always leave that stuff to Joe because tournament structures always hurt my head unless they're like double eliminations. Right now, Youngbot might get caught here, does get stunned up, and Charm does miss, but he's gonna Zodius! He's still alive! The, the Zyra Ultimate comes in, it doesn't save him long enough, and finally, after all that, TCM is finally able to kill Youngbot for his first death of the game, but in the meantime, Forgiven, he's pushing this middle lane, he's looking for the inhibitor. As you see the fight still breaking out, Kaltar picks up a kill on the Belgian Beast. We see a double kill picked up for him. As you see him sitting in towards the backside, you see Naruto are trying to come in as well as JWoww, but they get stopped in their own tracks here. Morocco gonna use that ultimate onto Unlimited, but not enough to pick him up. j might be enough though, if he's going straight for him, but still, with that Ignite going down, with the kill coming in right now, Forgiven is still pushing, he's on the Nexus turrets, he's gonna be able to get at least one here, he might even get a second, as Amazing does pick up a kill over onto j but the damage is done! Again, they lure the entirety of TCM away, and they take advantage of it by pushing somewhere else. It's it's just it's lane rotation basics, but they're taking it to such a good degree because they never let an opportunity go. They just never let up and stop the momentum because that's something you will see sometimes on uh, on on you know. Well, I hesitate to say it, but lesser teams they will they will be doing this kind of thing. They will be you know taking objectives off of kills, off of objectives, off of kills, but then they'll just go back. You know, they, they, the, but Copenhagen Wolves, they don't stop until they have no choice but to stop. So sometimes, actually, you will see them fall behind early, and then they actually have to rely on their team fighting skills, which are also extremely good. No, uh, you know, no, no taking that away from them. But uh, at the moment, they are not even really needing to team fight much. Yeah, I mean, it, and when they do, I mean, just look at what they have, their lineup. They have five zero three zigs. They have a one 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 young buck who's been farming very well. He was behind in CS very early on. You have a 2-1-3 Vi, who's extremely tanky, even has the shield to give her, uh, her teammates. And then Lucian, who's 241 CS. I'm going to do your ping going down. I don't know where that is, though. Oh, it was on Barney Diaz. He gets dropped very low. But even Lucian, Trinity Force, Bloodthirster, and another BF sword behind that. Yeah, and it's just getting scarier and scarier as time goes on. However, I would say that the pace has somewhat slowed down for Copenhagen Wolves. They've now taken all the easy towers for themselves, essentially. But now TCM have to catch people out, and the and the, the, the inhibitor is probably going to be the next major focal point. But they're starting pairing with them right there. Yeah, Matraco's bottom, Barney is in base, bear down about 6,000 HP, and Roots are looking for some sort of life here as he's trying to go for the, the spite, but he's forced to just run away. He actually gets picked up in the end, and TCM, they're going to give this Baron up. They find opportunities where I'm not even seeing them, and I, I can see everything. That is really, really smart Baron calling there. And they, they knew that they could tank it very well. They know they have a lot of lifesteal. They know they have uh, spammable shields from Vi thanks to her passive. So they could even afford to tank the Baron up, do a lot of damage to it, and then break off to chase away Narrow Terridor. Really, really nice stuff. And keep in mind, guys, there is only one next turret up. There's only one inhibitor down, but the Copenhagen Wolves are looking to make that two here. And I would imagine TCM, if they're going to fight, at any time in this game, they have to do it very soon. They can't really afford to let anything else go down besides this, but Amazing, he's looking for an opportunity to go in for the fight. He has his ultimate available, but Belgium is actually going to pop his ultimate go for the charm onto Amazing, just turns it around right onto him, and Kaltar blows him up as you see Forgiven going straight against Naruto, are able to push him out of the fight right away, and JWoww running for his life. Copenhagen Wolves just bowled their way in there. Yeah, they are now so far behind that they cannot possibly fight, and that is actually the GG well played coming in. Wow, Copenhagen Wolves taking that first game just so dominantly. Like, 
you couldn't tell the difference between today and yesterday. It can't get much cleaner than a 15 to 4 scoreline, 53,000 to 35,000 gold in a 26 and a half minute game. Just absolutely ridiculous. Everyone, it seemed like Company Wolves had the the jump on him every single time. Like if he, even if Nerdstar would get a good gank off, Amazing was always there to stop it. Yeah, and and a lot of credit actually goes here to Young Buck because he actually fell behind in lane, he was in a bad matchup, but what he did was he never died, and TCM committed a lot of their time and a lot of their map pressure to that top lane. If they had been able to make stuff happen there, they could have gotten the Fedra Necton out of the deal, that could have then snowballed a little bit more, they could have utilized that in the mid-game teamfights, but they just weren't able to get anything to happen, that just meant Amazing was free to do whatever he wanted. You know, I really wonder what would have happened if we did have Nerdstore gank a different lane. Like, like you said, he was really focusing top lane. He was really trying to get Young... Or not Young Book, sorry. Like you, Renekton and Young Buck instantly synonymous in my head. <clears throat> um, trying to get actually Jaywell farmed up and get a couple of kills. But e even at the end, Matrakel, he was 0-1-3. He had a Bloodthirster and a Last Whisper done. But only had 8,000 gold total in the game. And sadly enough for TCM, that was the second highest gold count on their team. Yeah, potentially, had the game been less snowbally and gone on longer, eventually Caitlyn would have been very, very valuable in this uh, in these team compositions because she is an AD carry that does a lot of damage from a lot of range, and that meant she could have potentially stayed out of that AoE storm that Copenhagen Wolves would have been utilizing for most of their team fights, assuming they hadn't gotten a massive snowballing advantage in lane rotations. Uh, as it happened, though, it, she just never got to be relevant. And in fact, even straight up lost the lane against Lucian. Mm -hmm. So what, what can you do if every lane essentially loses? You can lose the game. That that's, is an option. That's unfortunately what TCM ah. did do. But Copenhagen Wolves pick up their second win now. So they actually are leading the standings, if you want to think about that, even though most teams haven't played two I games yet. I still don't yet, understand but the standings. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult. But I'm sure Joe can explain it a little bit later on. But we will be coming up with game number two of the night. It'll actually be... Super Hot Crew versus Karanta Esports. That is going to be a pretty good game. Mm, we saw Super Hot Crew yesterday, and I've got to say, I really, really like Super Hot Crew. Like, uh, they are a team where they could take a game off TCM and Copenhagen Wolves, and I wouldn't have my mind completely blown. They are a really, really solid team. It would surprise me a bit, I'll say that, but, but they are a very, very, very good team. And Karanta, again... The one, the one game we've seen was against Copenhagen Wolves, which isn't always a fair comparison. Yeah, that's that's very true. But that game will be coming up very shortly. We're going to take a quick five-minute break here. So, guys, when we come back, we're going to have Super Hot Crew going up against Karanta Esports Club. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 